You're listening to the ECB podcast, bringing you insights into the world of economics and central banking. My name is Stefania Secola. Our governing council has just decided on what's needed for prices to be stable in the euro area. Today is Thursday, the 7th of March, 2024. And here is President Christine Lagarde explaining those decisions in our press conference. The Governing Council today decided to keep the three key ECB interest rates unchanged. Since our last meeting in January, inflation has declined further. In the latest ECB staff projections, inflation has been revised down, in particular for 2024, which mainly reflects a lower contribution from energy prices. Staff now project inflation to average 2.3% in 24, 2% in 25, and 1.9% in 26. The projections for inflation excluding energy and food have also been revised down and average 2.6% for 24, 2.1% for 25, and 2% for 26. Although most measures of underlying inflation have eased further, domestic price pressures remain high, in part owing to strong growth in wages. Financing conditions are restrictive and our past interest rate increases continue to weigh on demand, which is helping push down inflation. Staff have revised down their growth projections for 24 424 to 0.6%, to with economic activity expected to remain subdued in the near term. Thereafter, staff expect the economy to pick up and to grow at 1.5% in 25 and 1.6% in 26, supported initially by consumption and later also by investment. We are determined to ensure that inflation returns to our 2% medium-term target in a timely manner. Based on our current assessment, we consider that the key ECB interest rates are at levels that, maintained for a sufficiently long duration, will make a substantial contribution to this goal. Our future decisions will ensure that our policy rates will be set as at sufficiently restrictive levels for as long as necessary. We will continue to follow a data-dependent approach to determining the appropriate level and duration of restriction. In particular, our interest rate decisions will be based on our assessment of the inflation outlook in light of the incoming economic and financial data the dynamics of underlying inflation, and the strength of monetary policy transmission. The decisions taken today are set out in a press release available on our website. And I will now outline in more detail how we see the economy and inflation developing, and will then explain our assessment of financial and monetary conditions. Turning first to the economic activity. The economy remains weak. Consumers continued to hold back on their spending, investment moderated, and companies exported less, reflecting a slowdown in external demand and some losses in competitiveness. However, surveys point to a gradual recovery over the course of this year. As inflation falls and wages continue to grow, real incomes will rebound, supporting growth. In addition, the dampening impact of past interest rate increases will gradually fade, and demand for euro area exports should pick up. The unemployment rate is at its lowest since the start of the euro. Employment grew by 0.3%, in the final quarter of 2023, again outpacing economic activity. As a result, output per person declined further. Meanwhile, employers are posting fewer job vacancies, while fewer firms are reporting that their production is being limited 
by labor shortages. Governments should continue to roll back energy-related support measures to allow the disinflation process to proceed sustainably. Fiscal and structural policies should be strengthened to make our economy more productive and more competitive, expand supply capacity and gradually bring down high public debt ratios. A speedier implementation of the next generation EU programme and more determined efforts to remove national barriers to deeper and more integrated banking and capital markets can help increase investment in the green and digital transitions and reduce price pressures in the medium term. The EU's revised economic governance framework should be implemented without delay. So let's look at inflation. Inflation edged down to 2.8% in January, and according to Eurostat's flash estimate, declined further to 2.6% in February. Food price inflation fell again to 5.6% in January and 4% in February, while energy prices in both months continued to decline compared with a year ago, but at a lower rate than in December. Goods price inflation also fell further to 2% in January and 1.6% in February. Services inflation after remaining at 4% for three months in a row, edged lower to 3.9% in February. Most measures of underlying inflation declined further in January as the impact of past supply shocks continued to fade and tight monetary policy weighed on demand. However, domestic price pressures are still elevated, in part owing to robust wage growth and falling labor productivity. At the same time, there are signs that growth in wages is starting to moderate. In addition, profits are absorbing part of the rising labor costs, which reduces the inflationary effects. Inflation is expected to continue this downward trend in the coming months. Further ahead, it is expected to decline to our target as labor costs moderate and the effect of past energy shocks, supply bottlenecks, and the reopening of the economy after the pandemic fade. Measures of longer-term inflation expectations remain broadly stable, with most standing around 2%. Looking now at the risk assessment, the risks to economic growth remain tilted to the downside. Growth could be lower if the effects of monetary policy turn out stronger than expected. A weaker world economy or a further slowdown in global trade would also weigh on euro area growth. Russia's unjustified war against Ukraine and the tragic conflict in the Middle East are major sources of geopolitical risk. This may result in firms and households becoming less confident about the future and global trade being disrupted. Growth could be higher if inflation comes down more quickly than expected and rising real incomes mean that spending increases by more than anticipated or if the world economy grows more strongly than expected. Upside risks to inflation include the heightened geopolitical tensions, especially in the Middle East, which could push energy prices and freight costs higher in the near term and disrupt global trade. Inflation could also turn out higher than anticipated if wages increase by more than expected or profit margins prove more resilient. By contrast, inflation may surprise on the downside if monetary policy dampens demand more than expected or if the economic environment in the rest of the world worsens unexpectedly. Financial monetary conditions now. Market interest rates 
have risen since our January meeting, and our monetary policy has kept broader financing conditions restrictive. Lending rates on business loans have broadly stabilized, while mortgage rates declined in December and January. Nevertheless, lending rates remain elevated at 5.2% for business loans and 3.9% for mortgages. Bank lending to firms had turned positive in December, growing at an annual rate of 0.5%. But in January, it edged lower to 0.2%, owing to a negative flow in the month. The growth in loans to households continued to weaken, falling to 0.3% on an annual basis in January. Broad money, as measured by M3, grew at a subdued rate of 0.1%. So in conclusion, the Governing Council today decided to keep the three key ECB interest rates unchanged. We are determined to ensure that inflation returns to our 2% medium-term target in a timely manner. Based on our current assessment, we consider that the key ECB interest rates are at level that maintain for a sufficiently long duration will make a substantial contribution to this goal. Our future decisions will ensure that our policy rates will be set at sufficiently restrictive levels for as long as necessary. We will continue to follow a data-dependent approach to determining the appropriate level and duration of restriction. And in any case, we stand ready to adjust all of our instruments within our mandate to ensure that inflation returns to our medium-term target and to preserve the smooth functioning of monetary policy transmission. Check out the show notes for visual material about our Governing Council decisions and the full transcript of the discussion with journalists during our press conference. The next press conference will be on the 11th of April 2024. In the meantime, stay tuned for new episodes. You've been listening to the ECB podcast with Stefania Secola. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and leave us a review. In the spirit of Europe, I'd like to end this time in Estonian and say Jagmise Korani. Until next time, thanks for listening.